Let's take the integral of some exponential function. Here we've got one-third the integral from 0 to 3 of e to the x over 3 dx. Well, we want to find the antiderivative of e to the x over 3. So let's play around a little bit. We know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But here we don't have e to the x, we have e to the stuff. So let's try taking the derivative of e to the stuff and let's see if we can come up with something that looks like e to the x over 3. So we got the derivative of e to the x over 3, and by the way, x over 3 is the same thing as 1 third x. So the derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. And the derivative of x over 3 is just 1 third. So the derivative of e to the x over 3 is 1 third e to the x over 3. What this means is that the antiderivative of 1 third e to the x over 3 is e to the x over 3. Well, do I have a one-third e to the e Yes. Yes, I do. Take a look at this one-third in front. Constant rule allows you to take a constant out of the integrand, but it also allows you to put a constant inside of the integrand if it's being multiplied. So, we actually have a one-third e to the x over 3. And what we just found is that the antiderivative of one-third e to the x over 3 is e to the x over 3. We found our antiderivative. I'm going to rewrite this integral as the integral from 0 to 3 of one-third e to the x over 3 dx. Now remember that an antiderivative, when you take the derivative of the antiderivative, you get the function itself. We wanted to find the antiderivative of e to the x over 3. But instead, we ended up finding, by pure chance, the antiderivative of 1 third e to the x over 3, which suits us just fine because there's still a 1 third in there. And the antiderivative of 1 third e to the x over 3, as we noted, is e to the x over 3. So this is equal to e to the x over 3 from 0 to 3. Well, let's plug in our 3. We've got e to the 3 over 3 is e to the 1 minus e to the 0 over 3 is e to the 0. e to the 1 is e. e to the 0 is 1. And the answer is e minus 1. When you have exponential functions, a lot of times you're going to have an E in your answer in some form or another.